Today I am going to show you three methods to create a realistic drop shadow in Photoshop, which can help you to increase your drop shadow skills from this, to this, and to this. Let's start from the most basics. For example, we have a background, which is a pure colored graphic, even if there is a little bit of highlight in the middle and shadows around the corner. We can go to the Layers panel, double-click the text layer to create a drop shadow layer style. You can easily slide the opacity slider to the right a bit to increase the darkness of the shadow, or some distance, spread and size slider to control the position and size of the shadow. But things start getting a little complicated if we move the highlight of the background. Let's say the light source is to the top left corner. At this moment, the shadow should go to the bottom right a little bit. We can go back to the drop shadow layer style, change the angle so the shadow can go to the opposite side of the light source. An easier method is to move your mouse over the layers and just click and drag the shadow to the position you want. This is the most basic method to create a drop shadow in Photoshop. The problem is that both the background and text are digitally created. There is nothing like a gradient background or perfect light source in a real world. Your mind will tell you subconsciously that it's okay because everything in that image is fake. What if we want something realistic, like this real photograph, with all the texture and lights around? Even if I build a nice bevel and emboss for the text. And for the drop shadow, I use the same method. Adjust the angle of this drop shadow layer style to match the light source which is on the left. Still, you can tell, this is not realistic enough. The method to get a more realistic look in this condition is to create multi-layers of drop shadow. You can click the plus icon behind the drop shadow to create another drop shadow. And by multi-layers of drop shadow, and increase the opacity and distance one after another. You can imitate a more realistic shadow in this real photograph. In this example, I build five layers of drop shadows in the layer style to get this result. Next, let's try a bit farther. Here I have a light on the wall, and let's try to build a similar bevel and emboss text just under that light. Allow me to copy the same multi-layers of drop shadows to the text at this moment. Since I have checked the use global light, I can easily change all the angles of all the shadows to match the light source. It should be something like this. You can tell that something is wrong, can't you? Because the light is so close to the object this time. The shadows cannot be that ideal like this. The light from the very right side should be able to cover this area. Same does the left side. So in the case that the object is so close to the light like this, the shadows should be around in this area. My favorite method is to use a lasso tool to make a selection for this area and fill everything in black in a new layer. Then go to the top menu, find filter, blur gallery, then field blur. This tool allows you to create different levels of blur for different area you can create a little blur in the center of this shadow. And for the farther area, give it a more blur filter. Then change the blend mode to the multiply and adjust the opacity to get a result like this. All the previous cases were made on a flat surface, which is kind of a top-down view. Finally, let's try to build a shadow for this one. I have a text just like it's standing on this wood table. With the method from the last case and a little bit of perspective view, it should be a piece of cake. You can convert the text layer into a smart object first, then duplicate it and turn it into black. Use shortcut Option T or Control T to activate the free transform tool. What I like to do is to hold the command key of Alt key, click and drag the top side of the layer, just a little bit to the right and a little bit lower, to get the basic position of the shadow. Then again, use the Field Blur filter to give it a little blur in the area that is closer to the letter and more blur in the area that is far from the letter. With a little bit of opacity, you will get yourself a very realistic drop shadow for this letter. And if you go to more detail in this area, you can give it a little shadow just to increase the final result. Of course, a great drop shadow is absolutely not the only important element to build a realistic look in Photoshop like this engraving effect I always use, if you are interested in how to build that in Photoshop. You can check this video. Thank you so much for watching. 
I'll keep creating. Stay turned.